Welcome to part three in my three-part series on hepatic steatosis. In this screencast, we will discuss the mimics and pitfalls related to steatosis. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to recognize some common clinical scenarios where steatosis can be a confounding feature and how to differentiate those from some common mimics. One of the more common scenarios we see is a patient who's presenting with a known primary malignancy for staging whole body CT. This is a nice example, newly diagnosed colon cancer in a 79 year old man where we see focal areas of hypoattenuation along the margin of the liver. This one looking particularly nodular, this one looking a little more non-circular. These are along the falciform ligament, but the confounding factor in this case is that colon cancer is often hypoenhancing to the liver when there are colon cancer or colorectal cancer metastasis to the liver. In this case, we were confident enough about the non-geographic or non-circular appearance and the location that we said these are likely focal fat. But if you needed to confirm that this was not metastatic disease, you could certainly accomplish that with an MRI. A PET CT could also provide some characterization if these were hypermetabolic. This is another example of a steatosis related entity mimicking malignancy. So we have a, a 45 year old man, he has medullary thyroid cancer. We can see that they, he has diffuse steatosis and he has this very strange irregular mass like region um, of the liver. And in this case, <clears throat> this was found to be focal fatty sparing. Now, one caveat to just calling this focal fatty sparing and not metastasis is oftentimes metastasis will spare fat. So it's pretty rare to see fat deposition within a metastatic lesion. So just because there's focal fatty sparing doesn't mean the lesion's not real. In fact, in some instances, if there's diffuse steatosis, you can look on that opposed phase and areas <clears throat> that are showing nodular fatty sparing are places you should look very closely for underlying metastasis. And <clears throat> things such as your diffusion weighted imaging or your dynamic post contrast T1 weighted imaging can help you differentiate uh, the presence of an underlying neoplasm. Here we have a case of a 43 year old man presented to the emergency department for epigastric pain and ele elevated transaminases. And on ultrasound, we saw a background of diffuse, moderate to severe steatosis. You can see how the diaphragm is obscured. And then these areas of hypoechogenicity. These were called indeterminate but possible focal fatty sparing. This man did go to MRI and we can see this fatty sparing in that classic location anterior to the right portal vein related to those peribiliary veins and third inflow. You can also have vascular related focal fat accumulation. I briefly mentioned that in a prior screencast. This often manifests as wedge shaped areas of steatosis or focal fatty sparing. And it's a little unclear what causes these, but it's felt to be some perfusional abnormality similar to transient hepatic intensity difference. So there's likely an underlying portal perfusion abnormality in a region. That region typically is wedge shaped as that is the shape of peripheral vascular distributions. When that portal venous blood flow is diminished or not present and arterial blood flow compensates in that region for the portal blood flow, like in third inflow, those hepatocytes may not see the same local metabolically active factors from the pancreas or from the gut, and they may not see the same 
concentration of ingested material like lipids or carbohydrates or triglycerides. And so those hepatocytes within that region of altered perfusion will have altered metabolism, and that can result in both focal fatty sparing and focal fat. So here we see this wedge-shaped hyperechogenic area within the liver, and we can see that that corresponds to focal fat on our opposed phased imaging, likely due to a small thrombosed portal vein branch. At times, fatty deposition can be very heterogeneous. This person looks like they have underlying liver disease. We can see this kind of nodularity and abnormal morphology. And then this geographic area of heterogeneous hypointensity on CT. On CT, that hypointensity does have a differential that would include neoplasm and infection. Uh, and so this person did go to MRI and we can see that that area was in a region of focal fat deposition that was quite heterogeneous and somewhat mass-like and raised concern for metastasis or primary hepatic neoplasm in this person. Micronodular steatosis can be a diagnostic dilemma. Um, on CT, it can often look like there are multiple tiny focal nodules all throughout the liver. On MRI, we again should see a relatively homogeneous in phase with those nodules becoming apparent on our opposed phase, but again, often not apparent on a T2 weighted image. And this is multi-nodular steatosis, which on CT can sometimes look like diffuse micrometastasis to the liver. It could also look like granulomatous disease or sarcoidosis. There are a number of different mimics to this micronodular steatosis. And we most commonly see this micronodular steatosis in patients with another known underlying liver disease, like primary sclerosis and cholangitis or cirrhosis. This is just another example of micronodular steatosis in a person with alcoholic cirrhosis. So the CT was actually relatively normal, um, nearly imperceptible hypodense lesions. The MRI, we can see some underlying heterogeneity on our in phase, and then our opposed phase, we can see this marked signal loss in this sort of punctate or miliary pattern um, so multifocal micronodular steatosis. Again, when we're thinking about the differential for some low density lesions, the, the most common time when there is a confounding issue is when you're seeing this on a single portal venous phase CT. And, and other reasons for having low density within the liver, would it be acute hepatitis or fulminant hepatic failure? certainly disseminated hepatic infections, whether that's microabscesses, abscesses, um, histoplasmosis, <clears throat> fungal infections, and granulomatous disease. Lymphoma can be very infiltrative and low in attenuation. Some forms of metastatic disease, particularly colorectal and rectal cancer, um, tend to be hypo-enhancing, uh, but so do many different forms of adenocarcinoma. And then HCC can actually uh, contain fat, um, as can adenoma, and, and those can be confounding, uh, but you will often be able to differentiate HCC or adenoma or these other entities based on enhancement patterns, not just their appearance on the in and opposed phase. When you do encounter focal fat or what you suspect to be focal fat or focal fatty sparing on an MRI, on a CT or an ultrasound, I do recommend MRI is the best test. Um, if you're very confident on the ultrasound or the CT, uh, then maybe you can just call it and let it go. But if the patient has known or suspected malignancy, um, you know, abnormal lab values, or certainly if they have underlying cirrhosis, you should consider uh, an MRI for additional characterization. It's going to increase your confidence, reduce the risk that you're missing some underlying neoplasm confounded by the steatosis. In conclusion, steatosis is common. We're going to see it all the time in people routinely undergoing medical imaging. You need to recognize those subtypes and those imaging patterns because that's going to really reduce your uncertainty. It's going to
going to improve patient management. Uh, it can help us uh, avoid unnecessary stress and, and additional workup. Atypical patterns of steatosis are often related to this local abnormality in portal venous perfusion. So whether that's some sort of third inflow in those characteristic locations, falciform ligament, gallbladder fossa, anterior right portal vein, or it's altered perfusion due to segmental portal venous thrombus or local mass effect from a neoplasm, you can then get these wedge-shaped areas or atypical patterns of steatosis. And MRI is going to be the best modality for really differentiating fatty sparing or steatosis from metastatic disease and hopefully can help us avoid unnecessary interventions. Thank you for your time. I hope you have found this three-part series on steatosis to be helpful and informative. If you have, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and look at some of the other playlists for concise videos on radiology topics. Thank you very much.